Hello, everyone. Welcome to this training series on our MobiDrive B inverter. My name is Justin Miller of the Corporate Training Department, and I will be your instructor throughout this series. This training will cover many sessions, so please read through each session description to know what information will be taught ahead. If you're unfamiliar with the MobiDrive B, that's okay, because this training series will start with the basics and get you to an intermediate level of knowledge by the last session. If you have experience with SAW products in the past and just want a refresher on a certain topic, feel free to read the session description and jump to the section that you need to review. If you're unfamiliar with SAW, I would like to give you a brief introduction into our history and how we grew to be a leader in the drive technology sector. SAW was founded in 1931 in the city of Brooksall by a banker named Christian Pear, who noticed the growing opportunity with electric motors and reducers that were used for saws and planers at the time. SCW is the acronym of the original name Süddeutsche Elektromotoren Werke, which is translated as South German Electric Motor Company. Brooksall is located in southwest Germany, and this city was bombed during World War II, but the SCW buildings survived, and just before the war ended in 1945, Christian's son-in-law, Ernst, took over the company. The entrepreneurship of Ernst drove expansion, so by 1960, SEW had gained 600 employees and opened the first location outside of Germany in Agenau, France. In 1965, there were a variety of manufacturing needs in the market, so the modular gear motor was designed to meet this need. With this modularity that we still rely on today, SCW was able to increase the output of the assembly plants and reduce the cost of individual gear motors. In 1968, expansion across Europe continued to Sweden and Italy. The first overseas location was started in 1971 in South America, and along with it came the name change to SCW Eurodrive, since it was no longer a regional company. Shortly after the company name change, the first location in the United States opened in Troy, Ohio in 1975. In 1982, SCW opened the first manufacturing plant in the United States in Lyman, South Carolina. After 40 years of Ernst growing the company, his sons, Reiner and Jürgen, took over in 1987. Innovation and entrepreneurship continued, and in 1999, the first electronics manufacturing plant opened in Brooksall, Germany. In 2010, SCW ventured into the market of industrial gearing to support larger applications for port cranes, amusement parks, and the mining industry. Just a few years later, in 2013, the United States got its own industrial gearing assembly plant just a mile down the road from the first U.S. manufacturing plant that was built in 1982. Today, Brooksall, Germany is still the world headquarters for the company, which has grown to over 18,000 employees globally and has remained family owned. Brooksall is where all the research and development is performed, the product manuals and operating instructions are created, and drive electronics are shipped to the rest of the world. Currently, SCW has a presence in 52 countries across five continents. The red colored names are manufacturing centers where raw materials are made into individual parts or part assemblies, then those parts get sent around the world to the assembly centers. The parts are then stocked at the assembly centers and are built once a customer has placed an order. So each order is unique and there are millions of different assembly combinations possible across all of our products. There are 15 manufacturing plants globally, but some of the ones relevant to this training course are the electronics plant in Germany, which is where all of our electronic hardware is manufactured, 
France and Brazil manufacture the motor stator assemblies. China manufactures gears for the industrial gearing product line. And the United States manufactures the helical bevel gears and K-series reducer housings that get sent to assembly centers all over the world. Specifically in the US, we have five different assembly centers located across the country. Each assembly center has its own customer service, sales, and engineering department to support local needs. All right, that was a brief overview of our company history and how we can support customers around the world. Let's switch gears and go over the agenda for this training course. This training series has been adapted from our two-day MobyDrive class that we teach in person, so we will be covering a lot of information. We'll start with the basics of motor and inverter theory, then we'll discuss the models, power sizes, and options that extend the MobyDrive's capability. We'll also discuss how to read our motor nameplates so you can easily find the information needed to complete motor commissioning. Our MobyTools Motion Studio software is a crucial requirement to working with the MobyDrive. The keypad is great for making quick changes or checks of the parameters, but you really can't unlock the capabilities of this inverter without using the software. We'll be using this software throughout the whole training course, so by the end of this training, you should be very comfortable navigating the available tools in our software. We'll show you how to work with the Motion Studio project and backing up or restoring the parameters. We'll commission different type motors from scratch and operate them through manual mode and through Ethernet IP field bus. Proper inverter setup is key to reduce the number of faults that can occur. Just having a few incorrect parameters can cause an application to not function. So we'll discuss several common commissioning parameters and scenarios. We'll show how to use the diagnostic features of the software, such as the scope tool, and discuss common faults and troubleshooting methods. We'll configure a simple positioning application from scratch. We'll discuss SEW motor, brake, and encoder wiring. We'll also go over how to properly tune a motor so the speed and positioning are accurate for the application. Once you're comfortable with the parameters through the Motion Studio software, we'll show how to access those with a keypad so you can make quick checks or changes for the times when a computer isn't nearby. This course will be conducted with part presentation material and part lab exercises. Each session will be less than an hour long. So if you're new to the Movie Drive, I recommend you watch each session in order because some of the presentation and lab material will build off of previous sessions. If you have access to a Movie Drive, it will help you a lot to follow along during the lab exercises. If you don't have access to a Movie Drive that you can demo and change parameters on, then I will conduct the lab exercises and include video of the demo unit I will be using so you can get a visual of what is happening. All right, we have reached the end of this training course introduction session. In the next session, we will discuss motor and inverter theory and the different operating modes of the Movie Drive. Have a good day.